there. Okay, yeah. now. There you go. There you no, go. That's, that's definitely working. Okay. okay, got it. And now it's red. Yeah. Okay. So you guys can see it. So for now, I just do none until I, yeah. That works. Okay. Thanks, Julian, for helping out there. I know. Yep. Thank you. It's actually very hard to see those, Jenny. Uh, do you have the ones that David was showing before? The one that um, changed the changes the have, entire background? Yeah, I don't. I I would have to like try to down find the, those and download them. I can try to look on Google really quick, but. Let me send you an email with those images. Then. Oh, okay, if you send me an email, yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. I'm upload them. Vanessa, you ready? I'll be the yes. sergeant of arms to start off. So, all right. Welcome to Toastmasters. I'm going to be the sergeant of arms in addition to some other roles. Uh, just wanted to welcome everybody, and I'm going to go ahead and get started and introduce our president, Vanessa Waller, if you'd like to start off the meeting. Wonderful. Thank you, David, for jumping in as both Sergeant at Arms and also as our Toastmaster of the evening. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, David is our immediate past president, and he is an expert at not only technology, but also, of course, public speaking. And so thank you, David. So First of all, I usually like to say a special welcome, or of course, I'll introduce myself, but I'd like to do a special welcome to our guests who may be joining us. So for those guests who may not have met everyone yet, my name is Vanessa Waller. I'm the current president of Queen City Toastmasters. And I think I see at least a couple guests joining us on Zoom, and I think we may have a couple live in our in-person location. So I might go ahead and um, turn it over to our live uh, director of membership, Harvey Tran. If Harvey, if you want to introduce any of our guests who are joining us, I think I see you there, but I'm not always able to sure. see you well, so. Sure, thank you, Madam Toastmaster Vanessa. No worries. I don't Thank know you, Madam Postmaster Vanessa. Mm -hmm. I'd like Sorry? to introduce our first guest today, Heather. And uh, would you guys make an introduction, Heather? Hi, I'm Heather Jacoby. I am here to face my fears and get better at public speaking. So thank you, Harvey. Welcome thank back, you. Heather. Glad to have you both here. My friend, would you make an introduction? Yeah, I'm a guest, but not really a guest. I was a member of this actual club before the pandemic for roughly three years, I think, three years or so. So I'm just back to hone my skills again and just get back into the groove. So okay. thanks for having me. Glad to have you here. So we have a veteran in disguise, right? <laughs> Eugene, glad to have you, Eugene. Oh, Dominic, would you make an introduction, my friend? My name's Dominic. Um, this is my first time here. I'm a guest of Heather, so thank you for inviting me. Um, yeah, just checking things out, and hopefully I, I learned something. Right. We're honored, and we feel very happy to have you here with us, Dominic. Thank you. Awesome. Hi. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Tran, for introducing our in-person guests. And I think we have a couple joining us on Zoom as well who are guests. And correct me if I'm wrong, if you joined our club and I just was negligent in recognizing that, but it looks like we have Lynn and Jordan. Is that, are you a member now or are you still a guest? Yes, and I'm actually the evaluator for one of the speeches. Oh, today. Madeline, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I saw your name there and I was getting confused, but of course you are our evaluator. <laughs> Sorry about that. And we also have, uh, looks like a guest, Jordan Temple joining us. Yep, yep, Welcome. you're right. Um, nice to meet everybody. I'm, uh, you know, trying to learn a little bit more about what you guys are up to and, and how did my skills as well. Awesome. Well, we're glad that you are here. 
And I think with that, I will turn it over to a Toastmaster who will be guiding us through the meeting. And that is our immediate past president, David Jones. So let's uh, give David a warm welcome. Thank you, Madam uh, President, and good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Uh, my theme tonight is, I didn't know that, because there's so many times that we all like to uh, learn. You know, I'm a learner, I'm always reading, I'm always at work, I learn stuff, and even I watch a lot of documentaries, and I learn something every day, and at my age, I'm always amazed. I'm, I'm like, how did I not know that my whole life? You know, I'll watch Instagram and see Instagram hacks, where it's like, clean your oven with your hair. You know, how does that even work? So tonight when I, if you have a role and I call on you, if you could maybe 30 seconds to a minute, uh, just talk about something you learned in the past, you know, week or so, because we're all learning something. And I'm going to call on a few people to talk about what they've learned in the past week and also ask somebody to participate. Because I learned something this week, which I thought was really interesting. And full disclosure, I'm a guy. And when I heard about um, cold showers, I think about something totally different. I think about being younger and there's a situation and the situation's not gonna happen. So then you go take a cold shower. So I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see this woman and she's in the shower with a bikini on. And I was like, wait a minute, let me, let me see what she's saying. Cause I have to hear what, you know, what, she, what is she saying? And she's talking about how cold showers are really good for us. They help our body, they help your energy. And she said so much that I don't really remember what it all was, but fortunately she's here tonight. So Heather, if you'd like to come up and talk to us about why are cold showers healthy for everybody and how do we take that? Like, do you take the whole cold shower? Or do you take a hot shower, then a cold shower? But if you wanna come up here and share with us on what is the health benefits of a cold shower? And it's Heather Jacoby, if you wanna look on Instagram. She'll tell you. Thank you, David. Well, that's not embarrassing. <laughs> Something about putting on a bathing suit and getting attention when you're trying to help somebody does help a little bit more. Um, what do they call that? A thirst trap? I don't really try to do thirst traps very often, but um, so I have been taking cold showers. So I have started to do a program. It's called 75 hard and there's multiple phases of it. And in the second phase, we start stacking. Um, so you start adding daily tasks. And in the second phase, we've added some daily tasks. And one of the daily tasks is to take a five minute cold shower once a day for 30 days. Well, when I first, am I only supposed to talk for 30 seconds? Okay. So when I first thought about it, I've done some river bathing, I've done some ice baths and things like that. So I didn't really know how to take a cold shower. For me, what it looks like is I just get in the shower, I take my regular shower. And then at the very end, I just turn my timer on, I cut it to cold. And um, it's it's been quite a process, it's been quite a challenge. The benefits of it are um, the three topics that I talked about on Instagram were the first thing is mental toughness. So when we do things that are uncomfortable, that challenge us, it, it, it builds agility around being mentally tough, being able to do things that we're uncomfortable doing that we don't like. And then we, for me, I've built confidence in myself knowing that I can do hard things. It's, it's this odd feeling of, I hate it, but I love it. And so one, it's mental toughness. And then the second thing was um, it builds the immune system. And Wim Hof talks about it. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with who Wim Hof is, Iceman Hof, but he is, um, he's been well studied, scientifically documented. And um, he's extreme. I mean, he's not taking five minute cold showers. He's like hiking Mount Everest in a bathing suit. So um, and then the third um, was that it's anti-inflammatory and I'm an athlete and so um, it's anti-inflammatory. So one of the things that I talked about was we all need to be mentally tough in today's day and age with the world and everything that's going on right now. Um, we can all use a boost in immunity and um, we can all use anti-inflammatory benefits to stay in the game for the long haul because it looks like it's a long game. <laughs> so that's the benefits of cold showers. The three that I talked about. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I learned something from Heather this week. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our role 
people. Well, before we get to our roles, we're going to have a joke slash inspirational speaker. And I'm not sure if he's going to tell us a joke or if he's going to tell us a joke, but that's going to be Colin Stifler. Toastmaster Colin, do you want to give us an inspiration? Thank you very much, Toastmaster David. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. It's wonderful to be with you all this evening. Admittedly, I'm not very good when it comes to rehearsed comedy, so I'm going to skip the joke. I apologize for any disappointment, and I'm just going to cut right to the motivational content. And I'd like to share a thought. It's actually a quote that has a lot of personal meaning to me, provides me a lot of reassurance, both in my own Toastmasters journey, in my professional life, and in my private life as well. And I quote, no one is rooting for you to fail. Just let that sink in for a moment. No one is rooting for you to fail. By a show of hands, who among us has ever been to a Toastmasters meeting or a seminar or even a performance of some kind where you found yourself sitting there wishing that the person who is on stage would mess up, would do poorly, or would look bad. How many of you are sitting there right now wishing that I would mess up? Unsurprisingly, none of you raised your hands because I believe, unless it is your mortal enemy up here on stage or on screen speaking to you, you're probably not going to wish for that person who's addressing you to fail. I believe that most people, in fact, I think nearly everyone, are like you all. You don't have strong expectations for the person who is addressing you, and you certainly don't have any negative expectations or hopes for their performance. Now, if I stumble over my words, if my voice cracks and betrays my nervousness, or if I visibly lack confidence, sure, you all may notice that, but you probably won't dwell on it, and you probably won't judge me too harshly, and you'll probably move on from that thought and awareness pretty quickly. When you're up on stage though, and you're doing the talking, it feels like you are adrift in a sea of judgment. But that, my friends, is an illusion. So with that, I say, don't take yourself too seriously. Be gentle to yourself. And don't be afraid of messing up. No one will hold you accountable for it. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Colin. Appreciate the feedback. Uh, let me see. Next up is going to be our grammarian. Unfortunately, our grammarian is going after Heather because Heather had a few so's, but they're not going to count because you're not officially our grammarian yet. So with that, I just gave you one. You want to tell us something you learned this week and also what your role as grammarian is? Or you don't have to tell us anything you learned. I don't think I learned anything. <laughs> Thank you, Toastmaster David. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. My name is Lon, and I am the grammarian for tonight. And as a grammarian, I have two responsibilities. The first one is I have the opportunity to introduce the word of the day, and the word of the day is surprise. <laughs> and I noticed that some of you guys has already used the word, so bonus point for you guys. Um, oftentimes, we find ourselves in a surprise situation, whether it's good or bad. For me personally, today was a bit surprised because I made it in person meeting on time, which I find a surprise because I was pretty much backed up at work. And as far as something I didn't know I learned this weekend or this past weekend or this week, I haven't learned anything yet. <laughs> Hopefully this week soon. And I encourage each and every one of us here on Zoom and in person to use the word of the day. And my second responsibility is to take notes of filler words such as, uh, um, you know, so on and so forth. At the end of the meeting, I will come back up here and let everyone know how they're doing. So that way, if you choose to work on your speech and ways that you can eliminate filler words. So without further ado, I would like to go ahead and turn it back to David. Thank you, Madam Grammarian. Let's see. So you haven't learned anything this week. <laughs> okay. 
Now, I'm sure Eugene learned something. Now, y'all might not know this. If you follow Eugene on Instagram, he's a bit of a fashionista. Is that the term? He has his own little fashion thing he does. But you want to come up here and share what you learned this week? Because uh, we haven't heard from Eugene. Eugene was a member for many, many years and haven't seen him. So I'm glad to have him back. So good to see you. Thank you, fellow Toastmaster and distinguished guests. It's been a while since I've been here, as he mentioned, and that's actually what led me to be here today, which is what I learned. Last week, uh, one of the fellow Toastmasters, as I use an ah, as I speak here, one of our fellow Toastmasters, John Capello, who's not here tonight, reached out, said he was thinking about me because he hadn't seen me in the meetings. It's been a, it's been a couple years, and I actually helped mentor him when he first joined the club. And, you know, I told John, I said, you know, maybe I'll come by sometime soon. Maybe two weeks ago, one of my, my manager actually gave me a book that I actually was just looking through just now uh, about executive leadership. And then it had talked about communication. And of course, Toastmasters comes up in the book. And the main thing I learned in my brief reading of it, I haven't read the entire thing just yet, but it described public speaking as an opportunity to achieve the goal of the life that you desire. Many of us are here because we're afraid or have been afraid to speak publicly. But when you view it as an opportunity to achieve the life that you desire, it gives it a different spin. Now it's more of a positive versus a negative experience. I mean, you're gonna have your struggles and challenges as we all do with anything that we're, you're not used to doing, but the more you do it, the more effort you put into it, the better you'll get at, get at it and you'll have the reward that you're looking for in the end. So what I've learned is to view public speaking as an opportunity versus a challenge. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to have you back here. All right. And next up is going to be our timer. She's on Zoom, and that's Jenny. Jenny, you want to tell us about your role? Yes. Thanks, David. Uh, my name is Jenny Farias, and I will be this evening's timer. Uh, something I did not know that I learned this week, actually, five minutes ago was how to add virtual backgrounds on Zoom. So thanks to Julian, Elvis, and Vanessa for helping me out there. Um, and surprise, I actually was able to do it in time. Thanks to Elvis for sending me the right one. So I'm going to be timing um, everyone's speech. And so just to quickly run through what that looks like. Um, in terms of the general speeches, they're typically five to seven minutes. So at the five minute mark, I will, let me know if this works. Okay, you guys can see it's green. Um, at the six minute mark, it will turn yellow. And then at the seven minute mark, it will turn red. I do know we have an icebreaker, which is typically between four and six minutes, although you can go between five and seven, and that would be totally okay too. But I'll use the, the between four and six um, time slot. So at the four minute mark, I will turn it green. Five minute mark, I'll turn it yellow. And then six minute mark will be red. And you should be wrapping up your, your speech by that point. For the people that are doing the evaluations for the speeches, um, typically you wanna stay between two and three minutes. So at two minutes, green, two and a half minutes, yellow. And then at three minutes where you should be wrapping up your evaluation, it'll be red. And then for anybody that's gonna be doing table topics this evening, you wanna stay between one and two minutes. And so at one minute mark green, one and a half minutes yellow, and then two minutes when you wrap it up, it'll turn to red. And that's my, my role for this evening. So I'll hand it back to you, David. Thank you, Jenny. And for those in person, I'm going to mimic whatever she does on the lights here. So you don't have to look back to look at the lights. They'll be right over here going right along. Next up is another old Queen City Toastmaster member, and that is Cameron. He's going to be our ballot counter, and he thinks it's the first time he's ever been a ballot counter in like four years. So, so we'll see how he does. Here you go. Thank you, Toastmaster David. Uh, welcome guests and fellow Toastmasters. So first thing I'm learning tonight is how to be a ballot counter. I got to walk over here and uh, check the screen after every time. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two or three speakers tonight, David. 
two two speakers. So after two speakers come up here to speak, I'll be walking around with a little red plate here. If you'll just take your little tally mark here and under best speaker, you can put, you know, your first vote is and second and most improved. I'll take those up and then best evaluator and then best table topics. And so at the end of the night, we'll give out these nice blue ribbons. So, and it's funny that I, something else I learned about last weekend was cold showers. So it's just funny that that came up. And so is that, uh, you said 75 hard. Is that Andy Frisella? Okay. Yeah. I listen to his podcast, the real AF sometimes. So uh, I know a buddy that participated in it as well, but you're only like the second person I've ever known that brought up 75 hard. So um, I tried the cold showers. Uh, I start out with hot. I get all my soaping up done, and then I uh, I man up for the last minute, minute and a half. And uh, but they told me the person I learned it from was like, you know, you, you know, if you drink coffee every morning, uh, it takes you a little bit to go, get going. Take a cold shower, you won't even need coffee. So I took a cold shower and then drank coffee, and I was on top of the world. So uh, anyway, so yeah, cold showers, David. Thank you, Mr. Ballot Counter. And also for those of on Zoom, uh, if you could just send it to the club view, which seems to be out right now, but it'll be back on in a second because of the internet. And I'm surprised the camera didn't talk about learning something because he has a 10 month old. So you got to learn something almost every single day about life with a 10, 10 month old at the house. All right. Our first speaker tonight is going to do his icebreaker. I don't want to make him wait any little bit longer, but it is Neil. And Neil is. His speech title is Looking Back and Moving Forward, but never look back, always look forward. But he's, he's probably going to say that. So please welcome Neil doing his icebreaker. Thank you, David. And actually, before I get started, uh, Jenny, could I actually take the five to seven minute option? Yeah, of course. Right. <laughs> Thanks. It might be a little long-winded. When I first heard about Toastmasters, I thought it had something to do with the breakfast food. Now, don't get me wrong. I completely understand the frustration of leaving the bread in too long and ending up with burnt toast. It just gets the morning off on a wrong foot. But to me, it seemed kind of excessive to have a whole group dedicated to the making of toast. I mean, does it really take a weekly meeting to master this craft? I mean, aren't there appliances which will pretty much take care of it for us now? <laughs> well, obviously, I eventually figured out what Toastmaster is all about. And I learned that this is something that I could benefit from. Even though I don't have to give a lot of speeches, it's something that I wanted to become more comfortable with. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, I've done some reflecting on my past experiences with speaking, and I'd like to share some of those memories with you focusing in actually on some of the more challenging experiences, which are motivating me today to try and get better. I think there's certainly many technical aspects of speaking, which I can learn and get better at. But for me, and I think like many of you that I've heard share, a big part of it is getting over the butterflies in my stomach, which I can feel right now, and getting over the nerves of just speaking in front of a group of people. I've divided this into three sections, three parts. The first is the background stress and emotions I bring to a speech. The second is my ability to be present and think on my feet. And third, my ability to constructively think about past mistakes and learn from them. So let me start off with a moment that's still seared into my memory. I was standing in a big room. I had the mic, it was full of people. Some of them were family and friends, but some of them were people I didn't know. I could feel my hand trembling like a leaf. And I could feel drops of sweat going across my forehead. As I was, was, as I was trying to speak, I could feel a shaking in my voice, and I knew everyone else could hear it also. I was the best man at my brother's wedding, and I was giving the customary best man's toast. While I'd worked long and hard at my speech, and I actually felt like I had a good one. It had a little bit of humor. It had a little bit of sentiment. At that moment, I felt like I'd rather disappear than be up there in front of everyone. Looking back, I was actually bringing a lot of stress 
and emotion into that moment. Well, while my brother and I are really close, I still felt like I didn't know my sister-in-law that well. And I had a little bit of uncertainty about who was this new person joining the family. In addition to that, because of a change in my job position, I was stressed about having to move. In fact, the very next day after the wedding, I had to fly across the country which, from Charleston to my apartment in San Diego and move into a new apartment in Los Angeles. What I learned from this experience is it's important, me to, it's important for me to enter every speech with a calm and clear mind. At that moment, it certainly wasn't helpful to be thinking about last minute packing and moving logistics, especially because I'm not naturally comfortable standing up and speaking in front of a group of people. It's important for me to leave any background stress behind and try to focus on communicating to my audience. My second memory was a presentation we gave to my boss at the time. He clearly was not following the PowerPoint uh, slides our team had put together to explain a new billing process. So to my surprise, I found myself put on the spot and having to backtrack and try to explain it to him. I felt my mind freezing up as I fumbled for words to try to come up with coherent explanations to his questions, even though I knew, probably knew the process better than anyone. What I took away from this experience is even though I prefer be, having a chance to prepare what I'm gonna say, there's always gonna be moments when I have to speak unexpectedly. And as much as this takes me out of my comfort zone, I need to be able to move beyond that discomfort and become a better impromptu speaker. My third memory is actually going back a little bit further in time to a presentation for class. As is typical for me, I had procrastinated and had done a lot of work at the last minute, but I felt like I had got it all together and I was ready. Despite this, the, speech, the presentation had gone horribly. I kept forgetting what I was gonna say and I even skipped an entire section of the presentation. I remember standing in the front of that room, seeing the bored looks on my classmates' faces while I, on the other hand, felt like a panicked deer in the headlights. As I left that classroom and drove home, I remember turning up the radio, just trying to forget the experience, just trying to delete it from my memory. In retrospect, that was actually an opportunity for me to constructively think about what had gone wrong and what could I do better. Perhaps I could come up with a system to better remember the different parts of my presentation. I hope what I've shared here today doesn't come off as sounding all negative, because that's not how I see it. It's not all just burnt toast. Rather, these are lessons that will help me become a better speaker. Ultimately, these are experiences which are opportunities for me to grow and develop and move further along on my personal journey as a public speaker. While we're all at different points in individual journeys to becoming better communicators, I'm honored to join you all as we all move forward together. Thank you. Mr. Tishman. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Next up, somebody that obviously takes a lot of cold showers and has high energy is Dr. Harvey Tran. Give a speech. Oh. You can applaud. <laughs> He's gonna make you applaud. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hey, you guys, I'm Nathan Worry. If you don't give me a round of applause, I give myself. <laughs> Good evening, fellow Toastmaster and honorable guests here, as well as on Zoom. I want to share with you a story that is very personal to me. Something that happened to my child. So back in 2017, I was really poor. I was living in a one bedroom apartment. I had nothing going on for my life, but my wife, she chose to marry me. Well, I like to think that I'm good looking, but she said that the reason she married me was because I'm able to speak fluent Vietnamese and none of my friends can. So that was the deciding factor. Now, when we had our 
first child, Hannah, Helen was just so nervous because we were so poor. She questioned my ability to raise a family. One day when we walked through our apartment, she said, Harvey, other doctors are so rich. Why are you so poor? I took that very personal. And I feel like, hey, I have to do something to prove to my wife. And when we have the child, that's when I started to step up. Now, things are not all rosy. All the fortune does not come overnight. All the success does not come overnight. It's just like that Michael Jordan. You never seen all the free throw that he missed. You never seen all the hours he put into the gym. So in my journey towards success, and it's still an ongoing process, I just trust in myself, trust in God, and there's just something special about this baby. I rub Helen tummy every day, ask Helen to play classical music to her because I read online that's how you should do to the child. I have no experience raising the child, but I read up and I learned and tried to do the very best that I can. On the day that she delivered, when she came out, Helen was, she was tearing in her eyes, but me, when I look at the baby, I was very joyful. I also shed the tears, and I rarely shed the tears in my life. Even when someone died, rarely. But that day, I shed the tears on my eyes because of joy. I look at this baby. She is so beautiful. I told Helen, hey, all, all little girls, she is very, very cute, Helen. She looks like you. So after birth, Within that first 24 hours, you have the audiologist come and test her hearing. The news broke my heart. My little girl could not hear. I would just hold her in my arm and I could not sleep well at night. I started to use one of the utensils that my parents brought to the hospital for us with some of the food to just knock on the wall, just near where she stay and just keep talking to her. My little girl just looked at me and she could not hear. And, um, but I knew this girl is special. So that night, I prayed to God. God, this child of mine, she's so beautiful. But why is it that she cannot talk? Um, why is it that she cannot hear? This child is deaf. Later on, is she going to be able to marry somebody? Is she going to have a normal life? Are people going to look down on her? Stigmatize her? I know I can handle the pain, but I don't know if my child can handle that pain. But I also told God, that, listen, God, this is the gift you sent to me. Deaf or not, I'm going to raise this child to the very best that I can. And that I'm going to help her to become someone very, very special. The following morning, the, audi the audiologist came back. Before she even run another test, I asked her, what, what happened? What do you think is the situation? She said that maybe her neurological development is not up to par or she's not there yet. But after she done the second test, she said, oh, she picked up sound. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And she passed the test with flying colors. The audiologist said that it's most likely due to some fluid that accumulated into her ears when she was going through the birth canal. Now, there's nothing wrong with her. And by the time she hit six months, she spoke her first word already. And she told me she loved me in Vietnamese. She say love like the word in Vietnamese. You know, I think Lan could understand it. She said thương. Thương means love in Vietnamese. And when she just passed one year old, she already count to like 20 or so. I like to work in my home office and I love to drink coffee. I would just sit in there, tapping away. Helen, coffee! Hannah would come, run to the door, and just take the coffee mug to give to Helen and run back. And so I have that video. I cherish no memory. In summary, life will throw curveball at all of you. As soon as you solve one problem, when you're moving up, there's other problem. That is not the least of my problem. I don't know all the answer, but keep an open mind, keep learning, and keep solving your problem. Keep providing the solution to yourself, to other people as you move up. Fellow Toastmaster and honorable guests, thank you for your precious time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you Dr. Harvey.
I'm always fascinated by the quiet people that are very, they don't share a lot of information with you. You always want to know about them. So I'm going to pick on our president, Vanessa. Vanessa, what have you learned in the past week that you want to share with us? Well, David, that's a good question. I'm sure I've learned a lot of very boring facts that relate to my day job as a financial consultant for water utilities, but I don't think those are very fun to describe. One fun thing that I learned, though, because I do follow an account on Instagram that tracks uh, Earth Day related themes, environmental themes. And one of the things they were sharing was that elephants have evolved to no longer have tusks as often. And this was really something that struck me as so strange because usually elephants, you think of the big ivory tusks that they have. And the whole point of the story was that because of poaching, sadly, so many elephants have been killed for their ivory tusks and therefore they have evolved because of people. And that got me thinking about how much people do have an impact on our wildlife. They also tend to share a lot of positive things as well, not just sad things. And some of the things they've talked about is how wildlife has been returning to places they used to not exist in. So that's always really fun to learn. But it was just an interesting moment because thinking about Earth Day, thinking about the environment, a little bit sobering to think about our impact. But I just thought how curious and yeah, that's kind of something I learned, very random, but also kind right. of interesting. It's funny how much we learn on Instagram. I don't know if we're actually learning, but I don't know. That's where I learn a lot of stuff from. So thank you for sharing, Vanessa. I appreciate it. And with that, um, don't forget for those of you on Zoom, if you want to vote, send it to the club view and uh, Cameron will be able to check out who you voted for for best or favorite speaker. And next up is going to be our table topics. And we have Julian online who's going to ask us some table topic questions. And he's going to surprise us with all different types of questions. And if anybody wants to give it a shot, then uh, raise your hand and he'll, he'll call on you. So Julian, take it away. Good evening, everyone. I will be your table topics master this evening. This is a really fun part of the meeting where I will ask volunteers to answer a short question you have one to two minutes to answer and it'll pertain to the theme of the meeting so it's a great time for guests to participate if they you know it's a good time to speak if you haven't spoken much and uh i'll let people volunteer first if we have any in person or on zoom uh you can go ahead and volunteer <laughs> Any volunteers? We have one in person. We got Eugene. Okay. All right. So Eugene, you want to come on up and we'll give you a question? It's a whole different thing with Zoom. It's like <laughs> you're talking to nobody, basically. <laughs> okay. Good to go. Good to go. Okay, so Eugene, what do you think is the most important subject kids should be taught in school? That's a very interesting question and a tough question at that because there's a variety of things that kids need to learn that I think are not taught in school today. I was reading something, I can't recall exactly what it was. Actually, it was a video on Instagram, actually, is what it was. And there was a question asked to a gentleman about if he was president what would he recommend as being one of those things? And he actually mentioned tax law. And I thought it was very interesting because, you know, we're in the, at the end of tax season right now. And many of us don't realize how much taxes impact, taxes impact you, especially as a child. You don't think about it at all. You really don't understand money in any shape or form. So I think teaching tax law would be something that I would suggest or recommend uh, because it's so impactful in our daily lives. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, well, Eugene. No, you know, but you're, you're still a guest, so it's all right. So. All right. Great answer, Eugene. 
I definitely agree with that. I think most people don't have much financial knowledge coming out of school, and it's definitely something everyone needs. So, all right, do we have another volunteer for the next question? We got Cameron going. Cameron, okay. All right, I'm not allowed to vote for myself, so don't think I'm going to swing it. <laughs> All right, lay it on me. All right, second question. What is one piece of advice you have learned recently or in the long run that you think is useful? Well, I think Eugene hit on it earlier. When you come up here and you speak, the first thing that you think of is you're afraid of what everybody might think. And, and I think it was also our uh, inspiration thought of the day also is what everybody might be thinking of you. And y'all automatically go to a fear mindset. Whereas Eugene says, look at it as an opportunity, not so much as something to be scared of. And it might change your mindset to more of a positive one. So I learned, I will relearn. I've learned this a long time ago, but I've forgotten it. But there's actually the word fear, the four letters, F E A R. But instead of thinking of it, what we traditionally think of fear, think of it as false evidence appearing real. And so we always get in these situations when it's first thing we think of is fight or flight, right? Including being up here. But kind of what G Eugene was saying, instead of being afraid of it, use it as an opportunity. Think of it more of a positive light. So that's something I relearned here recently was fear is actually false evidence appearing real. Great advice. Thank you, Thank you Cameron. Now, we also have one more in person if we have you got another question? Yeah, I have, got, a, I have a few more. All right, because we got Dr. Eric, who's going to be representing our club this weekend and the district contest as a table topics master or table topics. And you want to ask him a question, he can practice. Sure. So here's a real easy one, Eric. What is a subject you would like to learn more about? Was the question, what is a subject I would like to learn more about? Yes. Excellent question. Probably myself. I think we are all on a journey in life. I think we spend a lot of time as kids in school, learning subjects, mathematics, history, participating in sports, growing up. But I don't think we spend enough time learning about ourselves. And I am almost 58 years old. I know I look 56, but I'm almost 58. And I find myself still trying to learn about me. Who am I inside? What kind of person am I really like? And I think that challenges us throughout our entire life. And I think if we were to look at, for example, education in school, things that were taught when we're younger, this is definitely an area that I think our classical education is deficient in. And I think a lot of people might choose different pathways in their lives had we been given an opportunity to really learn about ourselves when we were kids. So that's the answer to your question, which I think was excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Table Topics Master. Great Thanks answer, so Eric. I definitely agree with that. I think it's you learn a lot of information in school, but it's hard to know what direction to take when you're when you're done. So uh, David, do we have time for more? I have two more questions. Sure. Anybody wants to do it? Anyone in person one? or uh, on Zoom? We got one in person, Andrea Chocolate Butterfly. Would like to All do right. one. <laughs> yeah, it took me a long time to say Chocolate Butterfly, but <laughs> she is Chocolate Butterfly. Here she is. All right, next question. Do you feel that you have learned more valuable information in your professional career or in your time spent in school? And why? Actually, 
actually, I learned more in real life at work. Uh, when I went to school, I went to school for finance. So we did everything by hand. We did everything, uh, you know, you get a chart of accounts, you learn how to do chart of accounts, you learn how to put them in the ledger, you learn how to do everything by hand. I got to work my first day. And guess what? They set me in a computer. I did nothing by hand. Um, but what, what school taught me was what that computer should do. But what work taught me is how to interpret things. So I learned how to communicate with people, how to interact with people. Um, some of the things that you may not have to do, and a lot of our students now, they're, work, they're at home. So they don't have to interact with nobody. They're going to school from home. They're living life from home. We're doing everything on Zoom. And that real life experience of, of coming together as a team, the team building, you learn what really it means to be a team. They say there's no I in team, but if you're not in the team, then the team may not be inclusive. So those are the things that I learned at work. So I can't really say I learned more at work, but I learned how to apply what I learned in school to real life, because real life matters. Great answer. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. David, do you want to do one more? Uh, yeah, I thought I saw Elvis's hand up, but I could be wrong. Elvis, do you want to go? <laughs> that was calling, but I, yeah, I want to go. OK, last question. <laughs> When you look for an answer, what source do you normally turn to? Do you like reading books, for example, or Google, YouTube? What's your normal source and why do you like it? Thank you. That's a very good question. I would say all of the above. I'm typically working on a computer. I, I do work on a computer, in front of a computer every day. And so the first source would always be Google. I would put a search and then we'll try to go a little further, depending on what the topic is or what the subject is that I want to learn. I like to read a lot also. And typically I would go for a digital book as opposed to a, a physical, like my, daughter, for example, that likes to have the sense of touching the pages of the book. And I'm a little bit different. I, I, I like to be always online. So even though I try to use books, the source seems to me the same. It's always digital. So I would, I would try to use as much as I can, as much as I have at hand, always trying to find an explanation and a reason and a cause for things. I like to learn a lot. And one of the things that I learned today, actually, beginning this meeting was that cold shower is a thing. <laughs> I. I'm grateful to be in this meeting today. I have learned a lot, and that is my last source. Getting into Toastmasters meeting, I not only get relaxed, I improve and get going into improving my leadership and communication skills, but I also learn a lot. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics. Thank you, Elvis. My favorite source of information is usually YouTube, but both for entertainment and for information. So thank you everyone, you did a great job. I will now ask for a timers report from Jenny. Great, um, <clears throat> okay, so everybody's time. Uh, Neil, which was the first one, icebreaker came in at six minutes and eight seconds. So great job, by the way, on your icebreaker. Uh, Dr. Tran, five minutes and 50 seconds. Eugene, 50 seconds for table topics. Cameron, one minute, 22 seconds. Eric came in at one minute, 10 seconds. 
Andrea, one minute, 28 seconds, and Elvis, two minutes and two seconds. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, everyone. Great job. And I will now turn it back over to David. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. And on Zoom, don't forget to send your votes to Club View. Appreciate it. And with that, I'm going to move on to the next part of our meeting, which is the evaluation. And for the guests, the evaluation is an important part of the Toastmasters because you can just get up here and give a speech, but you don't know how well you've done. Therefore, getting feedback from you know, a peer kind of gives you a sense of how you did and where you can improve. And therefore, we're going to start with our general evaluator, Andrea Chocolate Butterfly Williams. Surprise, I'm back. Okay. Well, welcome to the a part of the Toastmasters journey where we actually get feedback so we know how well we did or where we need to encourage each other to do better. So with that being said, and I meant to bring that piece of paper up here. I left it over there because I don't know who are. I know who they are, but I don't know which one is doing what. So let me make sure. I say the correct person at the certain correct time. Okay, so our first evaluator today will be Eric Laxer. And he is going to be, I'm sorry, Dr. Eric Laxer. And he will be evaluating um, Neil's speech. And so we look forward to hearing what he has to say. Thank you. Madam Toastmaster, and once again, good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Neil, congratulations. That really was a great icebreaker speech. And I'm gonna tell you why I thought so, focusing on your content, your organization, and your delivery. We all know what it's like standing up here. It's not easy the first time you have to get up here and speak, but I thought you did an excellent job. Let's start with your content. You spoke about the nerves of public speaking, something not just all of us, but everyone can really relate to. What I loved about the way you spoke was you gave us three personal stories. You brought us internally, you brought us into you and allowed us to feel what it was like to go through the experiences you did, which were speaking as a best man at a wedding, which is not an easy task, dealing with an unexpected, situation at work with your boss's PowerPoint and dealing with interacting with classmates, very common scenarios, but all potentially difficult to deal with. Probably the most important part of your message was when you described that after the third experience, you were driving in your car and you decided that rather than dwelling on the frustration and the difficulty, you were gonna turn it into a learning experience, which I think was an incredibly good way of dealing with the challenges that you faced up till that point. I thought your structure was super. You took us down one path, talking about making toast in your kitchen, using your appliances, thinking about Toastmasters, and you totally surprised us because your speech really had nothing to do with making toast. So what I loved was as an audience member, you took me down one path, but then you ended up bringing me down one that was completely different. You also did a great job introducing the organization of your speech. And I forget exactly how you divided it up, but you told us that you were gonna talk about item one, item two, and item three, which really was very helpful. Probably what I liked most about your structure was you brought it around full circle. What I mean by that is you said, it's not all about burnt toast. So you started the speech in the kitchen with the appliances. You took us on a journey all about your personal experience and what you learned about public speaking, but then you brought us back in a comical way to the way you started your speech. And I thought that was excellent. Let me make a few comments about your delivery. To me, it seemed like you spoke with a very nice level of confidence. Even though this was your first icebreaker speech, as an audience member, I felt comfortable listening to your talk. And therefore, I think you were probably comfortable. You did a great job with eye contact. You were scanning the room. And you did a great job using your hands. And I wrote down to give you an example, but I can't find it here. But 
you at one point moved your hands from one part of your body to another part of your body, as I think you were talking about coming out of your comfort zone. If I could give you one thing to work on, it would be vocal volume. It was a little hard to hear you at the back of the room, which I think is a very normal part of giving your first speech. And I expect that that will improve. In summary, great job with your content, great job with your structure and your delivery. I look forward to hearing other speeches from you in the future. Thank you. I haven't done this role in a while, so I was sitting there waiting for the next step. But we have someone online. My friend Maudalyn Green is going to evaluate Dr. Harvey's speech. And so I'm going to turn it over to Toastmaster Maudalyn. Thank you, Toastmaster Andrea. I must say, Dr. Harvey, I am pleasantly surprised at the progress you've made in the months I've seen you speak. I, in preparation for this evaluation, I did go and try to see evaluations from other clubs. And I did see a difference in terms of how our club evaluates versus other clubs. And one thing I took from that is if you were in a club for a while and you've been speaking for a while, it's time to show some tough love. But I'm pleasantly surprised to say I don't have much tough love for you, Dr. Harvey, because I'm seeing progress month over month over month. The things you did well, the energy, you keep bringing that to us every week. Love to see it every time. You come in um, with great energy, opening the speech really engaging the audience early on. And you did that really well today by jumping right into a story that had emotional ties to you and to your life. Um, I love the way you talked about everything that happened with your daughter from when your wife was pregnant all the way through the misdiagnosis and all of that. It was quite a journey to bring us on. I felt the emotional tug of, oh my gosh, is this happening? And then pleasantly surprised to see into the speech that you let us know that it turned out to be a misdiagnosis. So I had a happy moment there. So the goal of the speech today was to engage with voice. And I think you did a good job with that. As you were talking to different elements of the story, I could hear emotions coming through. And I loved hearing that from you. The one thing I would challenge around that, you were great on volume, pitch, quality, great use of language, but the one thing I would challenge you is to bring even more of that vocal variety into your speeches going forward. You shared with us before that you have political aspirations, and I think bringing true emotion into your voice, into your body language, along with that natural energy you have is a game changer, right? So I, I challenge you going forward, when you were talking about the tears in your eyes, hearing the diagnosis, I wanna see that, I wanna see your shoulders slump. I want to see your voice get even sadder. And then when it turns out to be a misdiagnosis, I want to see more of that come through, like the excitement you felt in that moment. Because I felt it, but I just challenge you to go a little bit deeper. Um, so that's where I would go in terms of what you could do better. The other thing I wanted to know in terms of improvement is some of your earlier speeches, sometimes I struggle with the structure of the speech. You always gave great speeches, but I found it sometimes difficult to follow along with where you were going. And that, again, is a place where you've shown tremendous strides. Right from jump, you give us kind of what the speech is about, went right into a story, and then ended with a call to action. So a nice sandwich method of, here's what I'm going to be talking about. Here's how this story ties to it. Here's what you should take away from it. The last thing I'll give to you, um, which you did really well, was use of your body language, right? I, I would want to see more emotions in your body language, but I thought you kind of taking use of the stage and moving around the whole stage. You have great stage presence. I love the typing on the podium because I, you know, that's something we all do. So you're using kind of the props in the stage, right? So overall, great speech, great improvement. I can't wait to go to a political campaign and see you on the stage just killing it somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Modeling. As I make my way back to the podium, I wanted to say I didn't know that I signed up for the general evaluator role today. I thought I had signed up to actually evaluate a speech. And so I was presently surprised when I looked at the agenda again, for some reason, my brain was like, oh, 
Because what I do is, and I would, this is something that I want to say as a general evaluator of the meeting today, is I sign up for roles two, three weeks in advance. So if I want to do a speech, I sign up maybe two weeks of two weeks ahead. If I want to be the grammarian, the timer, whatever, I always sign up for my roles pretty early. Very seldom do I sign up at the last minute. So I recommend so we have a great meeting that other people follow my lead. <laughs> uh, so some things I learned in the meeting today, cold showers are good for you, uh, mental toughness, uh, she likes to take showers in bikinis on Instagram, um, I love Heather, I think Heather's funny, she knows that, uh, you know, immunity building and healing power anti-inflammatory, and I was thinking about my mom, my mom has sciatica, and so she has a lot of pain, and yesterday I was at the gym, I feel her pains, we are that close. <laughs> We're like, like twins. We don't just look alike. We very close. And so I'm working out at, I'm in, in the class and I went to go, I was like, what the Jesus crap? I was like, mom, can you take your medicine? Um, but I'm going to give her that suggestion. So thank you for that. And then I thought about, you know, we see uh, football players, basketball players, and they show them in the, in the ice icing they call it icing I believe that's what it's called they call it icing and um, so I was like that makes plenty of sense so that was something that was really beneficial for me um I love when oh what is his name Colin okay Colin <laughs> Colin said um no one is rooting for someone to fail and I recently saw this meme that's trending right now where it says all those that are booing you are in the stands with tickets they're not on the field so I wanted you to take that with you, stand up straight and deliver. Um, that was Dr. Harvey's speech about three weeks ago. Um, so that was like really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Check on people and don't just assume that they're not connected, right? Uh, John called Eugene and his, and he was his old, men, he was, you know, he was his old mentee. So the mentee was checking on the mentor. And sometimes we, because somebody led us or they were our leader, we don't check on them enough. So that was something that was very beneficial because before I came to meeting, which I was barely making it on time, is one of my old mentees called me today. And she just wanted to tell me that me being a chocolate butterfly is such a blessing to her still. Okay, so I was crying. Uh, <laughs> um, where are we at? Um, now, this was really cool. So Neil had an a, a icebreaker today, right? He came up here and was like, can I have five to seven minutes? I didn't know you could change your time, first of all. And, uh, but then he didn't, he, then he didn't even use all of them. But it was, but it was just so, it's so, I think that took him into a comfort zone. So sometimes, you know, I preach about be you butterfly, right? Be you butterfly. You need to sometimes just be yourself and be what makes you comfortable and stop trying to fit into somebody else's box, even if it's time. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh I was surprised that that was his icebreaker because he did it with such structure and ease. It was a very easy going uh, flow. And I just applaud you for that. Dr. Harvey, great speech. Um, Dr. Harvey, I learned today that little Hannah had a problem with her ears at, at onset. And anybody who knows me knows I love kids. So that tugged at my heart So I was like, I'm not going to cry here because I'm not messing up my makeup because I have to get up on camera. So, um, but I, I love that speech. I love um, him sharing, um, being open to share that. That's always hard to share um, something. So seeing God's healing and then learning. Lon, help me. How do you say love? Yeah. How do you say it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's Vietnamese. Y'all, can did I say it right, y'all? I had to look it up because I couldn't know. I didn't know what he said, so I looked it up. I hope I got it right. I got it right. Okay, y'all. All right. So I learned that today, um, and it was just a great meeting overall. I think sometimes you know when we I was in Soft Park Monday and they didn't have a speaker at all, so we did all table yeah all table topics. And sometimes people think at every at every Toastmasters meeting it has to be you know, this certain amount of speakers, my other club, the president, I have to tell her all the time, if people don't want to speak, they just don't want to speak. We can't make them speak. Uh, they done wrote me into this role of VPE. Air, um, Elvis, pray for me. Um, 
yeah so but sometimes yeah um sometimes you have to um sometimes you just have to get out your comfort zone and find how to be you in this place you're in and then display that and that's what we did today we displayed that so i'm not going to bore you anymore because i know i'm not surprising you anymore and surprise dr eric is 58 okay so with that i turn it back over to our toastmaster of the day thank you much toastmaster andrea um can we just get a quick timers report on our evaluators jenny Yes. Um, so Eric came in at three minutes and 29 seconds and Madeline came in at three minutes and 27 seconds. Pretty Perfect. close. <laughs> Pretty close. Yep. And we'll get our grammarian report from, sorry, I'm eating food. So I'll let you do it. Thank you. All right. So we're going to start off with David. Um, I did not catch any filler words with you. You used the word of the day, so good job on that. Eugene, I believe he left for the day, no filler words. Jenny, you had a few uh and ums there. You did use the word of the day, so good job on that. Cameron, no filler words, did not use a word of the day, that's okay. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> Neil, um, well, I just use it there. There you go. No filler words. I was very surprised that that was your icebreaker and you used the word of the day. So good job on that. I enjoy your speech as well. Caught me by a surprise when you said, can I have five to seven minutes? Dr. Harvey, no filler words. Vanessa, no filler words. Julian, you had a few, you know, and, uh, Eric, you used the word of the day, no filler words for you. Andrea, you had one uh, and you used at least two times of surprise. So good job on that. Lynn, I believe that is your name. You used the word of the day, no filler words for you. Heather, I did not catch any filler words. You used the word of the day way before I presented the word of the day. So good job on that. And Elvis, no filler words. And Colin, no filler words. So good job, everyone, tonight. And back to you, Toastmaster, David. Thank you. Appreciate it. And finally, I'm sorry we're running behind, but it happens sometimes. And with that, we're going to turn it over to our ballot counter to announce tonight's favorite speakers and table topics and all those good things. Toastmaster Cameron. All right. Well, we had uh, an icebreaker, so that always comes with its own reward. So Toastmaster Neil would like to come up and collect your icebreaker ribbon. And actually, Neil, don't run off too far because best speaker was actually a tie between Neil and Dr. Harvey. And since Harvey gave his speech and then did a mic drop on everybody and walked out of here, I don't think he'd be too mad if I gave his ribbon to Neil also. So, Neil, you get two. All right, in a landslide, our favorite table topics master goes to Eric. And so I don't have to make you come back up here. You also get best evaluator by one vote. All right. Toastmaster David. Thank you very much. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to our president, Vanessa, to do some closing words. Thank you, David. And it is fitting that Eric won tonight's table topics contest because he will also be competing at the District 37 table topics contest on Saturday, this Saturday. And that is bright and early. It is the first contest of the morning. So I will be there helping out um, and anyone's welcome to join on Zoom. So I will send an email to all of our members shortly with the link where you can register for this Saturday's events. 
And there's also the international speech contest that afternoon. And Sarah Mary from South Park Toastmasters, our sister club, will be competing in the international contest. So we've got some awesome representation for really, this is at the level of all of North Carolina. So it's a really important contest and it's really exciting. And I also like to, before we totally close shop for the night, um, ask our guests for feedback and any thoughts that ideas they got from the meeting tonight, especially if this is your first time here, we'd love to hear from you. So I think we have a few guests in person and um, let's see if there's any, are there any guests who want to share? Second time I did that, you figured I would learn the first time. Sure. Hold on. Let me grab a few things and then I will run over there. Yeah, unfortunately, Eugene had to leave early. I would love to hear his feedback as a former member, but I think Kylie might want to say hello or no to say hi. All right. Any thoughts? Yes. Um, hi, I'm Kylie. This is my third time here. And every time I get more comfortable, but it really does scare me. Um Anyways, I really enjoyed it today. Neil, you did a really good job. You seemed really comfortable, so good job. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. And Heather, our Instagram model, any <laughs> thoughts on the meeting? I thought it was excellent. I love how everybody gets an opportunity to talk. Neil, I loved your, uh, your icebreaker. It was really good and informative. Um, I thought everybody did a really good job. Thank you. And also we have Dominique and Dominique and Heather and I and some others are hiking buddies and and uh, so I just want to get your feedback and thoughts at tonight's meeting. Sure. Yeah, this was my first time. I thought it was wonderful. I came in with uh, an open mind. I wasn't sure what to expect and it was a, a, a good time. It was nice to watch other people public speak and um, everyone done a fantastic job. Thanks so much. Appreciate you coming All right. back to you, Vanessa. Wonderful. Well, thanks, David. And I think um, we do have one guest on Zoom. Jordan, would you like to share any thoughts on tonight's meeting? Assuming this is your first time? Yep, yep it is my first time. I uh, enjoyed listening to everybody's speeches, and I thought that um, you guys have a really supportive environment and uh, enjoyed learning a little bit about all the different roles and um, regalia that, that is as in, goes into each of these meetings. Awesome. We're glad you could make it. All right. Well, with that, I think that's all from me. Do any of our officers have announcements before we adjourn? Only right. some bragging rights, because whenever as a club, um, oops, I didn't turn this around. As a club, whenever we have uh, district leaders, in our club, it's always good. And I'm an area director, which is kind of a small one, but tomorrow, tomorrow night, I'm going to become division director for division C. So I'll be over like 20 clubs. So it's just kind of, kind of a feather in our cap for the club. So other than that, but this whole weekend is Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday morning is uh, our annual convention and it's all on Zoom. So most people don't want to be watch the whole thing, but I'll be there. But anyway, so that's that's the only announcement I had. That's awesome, David. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. I'm super excited. And yes, I will be there at least Saturday morning to cheer on Eric's table topics. And I'm sure I'll see other people I recognize. But that is super cool. Yeah. Awesome accomplishment. All right, well, with that happy note, I guess I will call this meeting adjourned and I'll see you all next Tuesday.